All right, everybody. It is Post Politics. Thank you for joining us tonight. Live from J Rev Studios tonight. Liberty Movement Radio, Raz Radio Live here. Uh, we have uh, John Masaria, who is making a documentary called Behind Truth Art. And uh, from what I understand, it's a, a series. I mean, he's going to have a bunch of people, but but for this one in particular, there's a Kickstarter campaign. If you just go to Kickstarter, Behind Truth Art, uh, you can, you can um, check that out and see what's going on with that. We're going to be talking to him first hour and hopefully get into some stuff. And, I, man, I looked up the trailer and stuff. Everything looks very professionally done. Great camera work. Great, um, you know, great, great audio equipment and lighting and all of that, you know, much, much better than schmucks like us can do. So uh, we'll be talking to him first hour and get into a little bit of the meat and potatoes about that. Yeah, no, I wanted to, he's got a, a documentary, right? Yeah, Behind Truth Art with our good friend uh, Anthony Frieda. So, um, John, are you there? Hello. All right, hey, what's going on, man? Hey, how are you? Uh, just uh, playing uh, musical call list, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Did I hang up on you guys? You hung up on him. It was right. a beautiful thing, man. It was awesome. <laughs> well, that's, um, is Anthony on the phone? No, uh, I, I didn't hear back from him. I didn't know if he was going to call in or not. Um, oh, no, yeah, he's going to call in. Oh, that that would be excellent. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I didn't, like I said, I didn't hear anything about that. But uh, I, I definitely wanted to showcase this deal. And um, Anthony is a great friend of the show. Um I, I love his work, and uh, you know, just to give you a little bit of background, this is the first time that we've talked. You know, I, I've um, I, I've kind of stretched out a little bit more. I used to just be like this diligent researcher, and um, you know, but I've always played music, and you know, I enjoy art, and I just didn't feel like a lot. Probably Alex Gray is probably like the only thing that's spoken to me as far as actual arts concern over the past handful of uh, you know years back. And um, when I've started to see this emergence of, of truth art being passed around, I've been real excited about it, and I, I love it. And I'm so glad that you're, uh, that you're covering it. Yeah, this is going to be a first. Are we actually on the air right now? Yeah, yeah, we're live, man. Oh, cool. All right, cool. Well, hey, hey guys, thanks for, for inviting me in. Uh, yeah, I, I, I met Anthony, um, and I do believe everything happens for uh, I thought it was important that uh, something get put together in a in a professional manner that can kind of bring both the truth movement regarding uh, his images and then the stories behind each image. And I don't think anybody's really done a film like that. No, I I, I haven't seen anything. Now, um, uh, before uh, Anthony just called, I believe it's him. Um, but uh, before we bring him on here. Uh, what, what what kind of inspired you to make this? And I, I saw that there's a, a series of stuff that you're making. You know, is this just um... exactly? You know, there's there's lots of uh, political artists out there, um, but Anthony uh, actually just so happens that he is somebody I've been following for a long time. And when I when I seen him on Long Island, I was like, holy cow, you're Anthony Frieda. And he's like, yeah, and you're, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm John, I'm John. And uh, we just became friends, and um, you know, I, I said, you know, this this could make a really good documentary. Um, there's tons of activists that are, that are making videos, and there's tons of people doing talk shows, um, but not too many people really get to meet the artists that do the, the, the activism work. So when I got to talk to Anthony, he was kind of shyish, I would say. I don't know if he's on the phone. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, uh, let, well, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and pipe. Um, Anthony and and just right quick, you know, I I've sure. kind of become a little bit more enthused with this because I I can't draw to save my life. You know, I've got many different creative and artistic outlets. You know, uh, painting and drawing is not one of them. But I I really am inspired and really enjoy it. And um, my my girlfriend I think is very very talented in that era. Um, anyway, Anthony, are you there? <laughs> I'm here. Am I uh, You're live. part of the party now? Hell yeah, man. You're live. <laughs> hey, cool, man. How are you? How you guys doing? <clears throat> Great. 
So, uh, yeah, groovy, let's groovy. let's um let's dive in a little bit further. I went uh, to the Kickstarter page today, and I'll I'll be uh, you know dropping a few a few bucks over that way in the next day or two. But um, it's uh, it's very interesting to see the perks and all that stuff. We've got our own uh, deal we're trying to make for Pork Fest this year, um, but uh, it looks like you, you got you guys you guys got a lot of stuff uh, you know that's that's really coming together for this. Well, thanks so much for, uh, you know, um, helping to promote it and, and being part of the Kickstarter thing because uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, you get to, you know, be part of this whole project. We want to bring in as many people as possible and, and uh, you know, obviously giving back with artwork and with whatever we can to help people be part of it is um, is really important to us, and I think that's really what we're trying to do here. Yeah, we. It, I I took some liberties with Anthony, I guess, and I put together a pretty awesome package in the rewards area. Yeah, and uh, people can contribute as little as three dollars, and as much as ten thousand uh, dollars. But for like, I think it's twenty bucks, or you can actually take home uh, Anthony's printed artwork, signed, um, and and delivered to your you know your mailbox. Not some digital copy or something, but this is an opportunity to help us fund this film. Thirty-five hundred dollars is what our goal is. If you do contribute, um, whatever it is, um, and we only make twenty, like let's say thirty-four ninety-nine, so we're a dollar shy. Uh, nobody, nobody pays out anything, and we collect nothing. So it's a all-or-nothing kind of a deal. So we're hoping that we we get some sh- light shed on this. Um, and I hope we do reach our goal. But um, and if anybody wants to make a contribution, we really do appreciate it. I I will, and I I don't know how all that works. Usually, I'm an Indiegogo thing. I know the Kickstarter. You know, all the money comes back if it doesn't work out or whatever. But um, it doesn't materialize unless well, you know, like nobody nobody. Nobody gets charged unless the, the thing materializes. Right. Well, Indiegogo doesn't do that. You know, whatever is brought in is is done. Um, well, I have a. I have you know, a my wife question. said. You know, my wife said something about that, and it makes total sense. If you figure that your total, like, if you if you have a project and you say, let's say it's a thousand dollars, and you only get five hundred, my wife said that five hundred won't complete your project. So why collect any money? So we figured for thirty five hundred dollars, it, it'll it'll you know pay for a lot of travel and a lot of editing time, and of course it has to go pay for that art that they're paying for sure. to, to them in the mail and all that stuff. So if we don't collect, you know, I guess Kickstarter figures either you figure out what you need. If, if you don't make that, then you're not going to get anything because you're not going to yeah, do it's anything. Yeah, it's a win-win, you know. I mean, you give a couple of bucks and you get some artwork and you're part of um, spreading these messages of peace and freedom. And, uh, you know, we want to touch on so many different topics. I mean, John is, you know, an expert on a lot of different um, areas of the uh, the movement here. And uh, my artwork is just kind of a touchstone Sure. starting point for a conversation about all of these different issues so it's kind of we throw it out there image wise which you know uh, people can respond to um and then take off from there and hopefully lead to a conversation and investigation and uh links to all different kinds of information and um hopefully we want to wake people up you yeah. know i mean well, that's yeah. what we're all about well, just kind of robert yeah and i don't want to, well don't hold, want hold on guys hold on guys hold on guys uh robert you had a question yeah I, I wanted to ask because you know i mean it's liberty oriented and there's lots of different facets of liberty are you guys accepting bitcoin or any other type of alternative currencies to help fund this project no no um i haven't set that up on kickstarter and i think some of the other guys are doing bitcoin um I really I, – I don't know a broker to give me bitcoins or how to deal bitcoins. Hey, I just sorry. learned today. I literally just uh, – literally Robert had to go um, sit me down and give me the crash course, and I just bought <laughs> I just bought like 50 bucks worth of stuff today. So. If we knew how to do it, we would, right? Yeah, John? yeah, yeah. I, mean, yeah, I probably would be interested <laughs> in it. Nothing against bitcoins. Little, yeah, right, you know, right. For, the, for this particular project, I don't, I don't think that, you know – I, I think the more or less I want to see people get excited over the fact that we're going to cover things like Monsanto, which, of course, Anthony's art does cover Monsanto. It covers things like, you know, Fukushima. It covers things like MK Ultra, And it covers things like, um, you know, the atrocities in the bank corruption and, uh, of course, false flag events and, and this kind of thing. But, you know, to you and me, 
and to everybody else who's probably even listening, these are regular words that we all understand, but I'm hoping that this film will open up new doors for new people to come and say, oh, wow, I've seen that, that artwork in the Rolling Stone, and I always wondered about that guy, and here he is, and, you know, and this is what he, this is what this guy has done, and why he got to the point that he's at. You know, Anthony has a great story, and I want to tell it. Yeah, no, nah, and we've, uh, you know, we've, well, me and Anthony have, uh, you know, become friends over the past couple months here, and, um, you know, yeah, I, I enjoy the work, and, you know, that, uh, I, I just recently liked that Facebook page, Art With Teeth, and it's very interesting. Yeah, I, I, uh, that's yeah. our friend Keith, yeah, he's doing a great yeah. job. Yeah, I mean, all of the different stuff that's out there, you know, I don't, I don't want to take any heat off of uh, off of Anthony, but, you know, just... As um, you know, enthused as I am about what Anthony is doing, it's very interesting to see you know this this, this sort of subgenre of the community really take take root and um, start to sprout. You know, his, his name is Keith Ward, and actually he he was at one of Anthony's art shows, and he is so such a gentle soul. He's actually a third. I think he did some third grade teaching, or he's a third generation teacher as well. So he has it like in his blood that he's such a like a nice guy too. So he started this web page, uh, I guess, on Facebook, and it's blowing up. I mean, it's got six thousand likes, and I think less than a month. Uh, and he's doing great. He's going to be in the film too. Excellent. So um, yeah. there's a lot of great political artists out there, and I mean, this it's the power of the image, you know, t to get these political ideas across. That is um, really what we're tapping into here, and kind of just. You know, my work is just one little piece of the puzzle, but um, I think in this context, we can really, you know, touch a lot of people in, in, a, in a lot of different areas, and that's what we're trying to do. Now, what is? Um, I mean, let's um, let's sort of uh, set set the stage here for what what's um, going to be conveyed in this. I mean, um, you, you know, well, you, you I, mentioned if I told you, like, you know, like the, the Mona Lisa. Immediately, that image comes to your to your mind. Right. Um, when you think of Fukushima, I want you to think about Anthony's piece of, you know, his his artwork, and and maybe, you know, remember what's going on there through the documentary that we're going to put together. Is we're going to bring facts and figures and what's going on, the latest things with this artwork. So Anthony did a great piece um, on Fukushima. I went to the supermarket, for instance, and uh, I seen mutated strawberries. Yeah. And uh, they were double-headed or triple-headed strawberries. And they were from a company called Nature Ripe. And actually, Nature Ripe called me up because I told them that I'm going to, you know, if I keep seeing these strawberries in my neighborhood, I'm going to, you know, call it the local news. And I said, I'm also going to put this in my, in my film with, you know, in this documentary as well. Well, they called me back, and I told Anthony about it. And immediately, Anthony put together such a great piece. Um, and it was like, I couldn't believe it. I mean, it... In the first day, it was 181 shares on my page, which is pretty cool because uh, I, I don't usually get that in one day. Right. Anything. And that's what the Well, that's the power is. of it's the so image, powerful. you know. That was, yeah. well, it was John, you know, we worked as a collaboration on that idea, and I kind of just, you know, made it come to life. But this is the power of the image. You know, people, these memes have real power, and they can get, they can go viral and take off and make people think and link to different ideas and, and you know, uh, concepts and uh, stories and facts. And uh, we're also trying to do, like what I try to do with my work is, is try to have a little bit of humor in there too so it can yes, temper yeah. the message so it, it's not like hitting somebody over the head with a brick, you know, because that can turn people off too. So I try a spoonful to, you know, there's, there's a spoonful of sugar in that Fukushima piece. The, uh, the uh, spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down type of mentality. Have you seen that yeah, piece, guys? What now? Have you seen the bottle of uh, the y Fukushima? Yes, drink? yeah, yeah. I I, okay, I shared it or that. put it on a put it on somebody's um, uh, wall or a group that I was in the other day, I believe. But uh, now I, I I want both of you guys' take on this because uh, we're trying to do it in our own right, more in a journalistic aspect and more of a uh, you know a new media type of deal and. Um, I don't know. I guess I'm humble enough. I I, I want to sort of bring the heat off of us because I don't think that uh, I personally do what you guys do in the sense that um, it, I, I feel like this 
cultural revolution that's happening. Now, some could attribute that to, you know, things like what we're doing, but, um, you know, what you guys are doing, the filmmakers, the music makers, the art makers, um, everybody that's telling, telling this story from their own creative means, I feel really, really, uh, in one shape or another, funds the actual revolution that's going on, the actual change, Absolutely. changing of the guard. We, we make change. We, this stuff makes changes. And you could see that with a lot of the directives from the government. They get shut down a lot of the time. And uh, we've, we've, we as a collective, I mean, people that are speaking on the radio and people that are making films, and we've stopped so many different things from happening. And I think that uh, for me, like with Anthony's images, I, I see his Fukushima thing going on a T-shirt. Because what better way to get the the community talking about Fukushima than putting it on a T-shirt and saying, hey, look at this. It's funny, but yet it's not funny. This is very serious, and people need to. And, you know, I could see people making this, uh, like, I don't want to say the word viral because that's so overdone. I just see, like, you know, the kids in in high schools, they need to start talking about the atrocities going around in the world. I think they do. So well, they are. You know, the, the good thing is they are, and they are because they see these images. They state they listen to what you guys do on the radio. They listen to other guys on the radio. They listen to um, all kinds of alternative media. If it's, if it, you know, now it's it's music and it's art and it's there's all different uh, ways to convey the message and right. the creative ways. The more creative and interesting and and funny you can make it, you know, the better chance you have of connecting with people. And I think we're all just part of the puzzle. You know, we, we all have our thing that we're good at. You know, John's making films, you guys are doing radio, you know, I make pictures, and it's all just one piece. But to, collectively, together, we are making an impact. We are waking people up. And we just have to, we have to never surrender, man. We can't let the bad guys win. We're the good guys, and we need to stick together like an army for truth and for peace and for justice and keep fighting these these bastards and, and, because uh we're gonna win man yeah and i i feel like that that's um the bigger message totally um you know one could argue you know shows like this and many others you know i, I i'd like to look at it personally like we sort of facilitate um you know things like you guys are doing to the masses. We try yeah, our, our damnedest to do. Don't be hard on do. yourself. You're doing a great job. Oh, well, you, you're, you're opening a lot of people's minds, and you're and you're making people think, and you're exposing all kinds of people to these different ideas that they might not have been exposed to. Well, and and, and you know, I know I've probably told you this before too, but you're so right about the community. You know, I I feel like um, you know, I would rather invest in. Anthony and John's work and buy uh, local and <laughs> clean food or whatever. I, I would rather grow this community and vote with my dollars and my association with people and, and, and things than that's the way we make these people obsolete. And I feel like mass noncompliance and making everybody um, that you don't care to, you know, have an association with obsolete in your life is the best way to go like that. That'll put a dagger in the heart before anybody, Robert, you were going to say something. Well, I was going to touch on something that he just said. I, 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 as the resident philosopher, I have to agree that, uh, freedom is inevitable. I mean, it's been the, the, the goal of human history. I mean, you go all the way back to when, uh, Sirius conquered Babylon and his very first edict was to free the slaves. Now, granted, there was a lot of political, uh, you know, uh, things that went in, that were involved in that. But I mean, every step forward, we see these giant leaps in freedom from the Magna Carta, which made it uh, finally to be able to question the uh, the edicts of a king, to the Constitution, to what we're seeing in the freedom movement today with people like Stefan Molyneux and Derek J. Uh, Freeman, and 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 then people producing documentaries like this one and others, you know, like. I, I just think it's inevitable, and I think that it's a very exciting time to be alive. And I, I and I and I just wanted to point. That I'm out. glad to be a part of it. <laughs> yeah, you got we have this leverage power for the first time in human history. That's what makes it. You know, we actually have power. We've never. There's always been a top-down, you know, media telling us the way that things are. And now we can say, no, it's not the way things are. Here's the, you know, here's the real story beyond the corporate and state propaganda that 
is used against us. We're using propaganda for good with images and words and philosophy and facts, and, and this is what we're trying to do. Right. My, my philosophy, personally, has, has been for a pretty long time, and I actually got this from a girl. She's only 14 years old when I first heard her. Her name is Rachel Parent, and she's an activist against Monsanto, and she said I, she puts uh, human health above corporate wealth. And I use that now as like a model for everything I'm doing. Like, that's what it's all about. It's about human health, but not just human health. It's more about earthly health. Um, so if you're doing something that's good for Mother Earth, I think you're doing something good for everybody. And, um, you know, I just did a small little tiny video that I released as a, like a, a short, and there's this uh, soldier talking. War is basically a machine to make money for the, for the super rich. The guys who are in the trenches, they go back home to their poor lives. None of these guys make money. They're shooting people that have no money. Uh, but the only people that are benefiting by it are at the top end. And I don't think a lot of people really put two and two together and kind of realize that it is I, – I think everybody understands that it's a war machine, but you're affecting these soldiers at, at a core level where enough is enough. Now they're speaking out. I want to get those people put into this film too so that you know people, people open up – this is not covered in the mainstream media at all. Uh, John, I, I I agree with you 110. percent And you know, I and this might just be like my own personal. Oh, Turn me up for a second. Yeah, sorry. right now. I was gonna say, and don't forget suicide rates. I mean, the suicide rates are through the oh, roof man. with last these time, soldiers. Last time I went down to the Keys, I just went down there to work for the weekend, and there was, uh, and this was like early last. This was probably this time last year. And, you know, there's a guy sitting out there with a sign that said something to the effect of, you know, 20, 22 soldiers a day die from committing suicide and things like that. You know, I... I uh, Major mental problems. My point, my point that I was going to make after that, you know, you're, you're so right on that. And personally, for me... I dig stuff that hits me right in the feels. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm like, yep. I, I like hearing. We've got hundreds of channels of garbage that's being put out there on television. And I like the human experience. I like listening to people's stories. And, I mean, that's the way that we grow and we and we understand. And, you know, we've got this thing that's a common human experience. However, you know, we have things like, um, you know, war or trials and tribulations or uh, whatever it might be, you know, these, these different experiences that we have um, that, that sort of uh, – get in get into our heads and our hearts uh, all the same that we we don't personally experience but we know this through um the actions and the stories of our peers and i think that that's more important and not only more important for me personally it's more entertaining than anything else that's uh you know going on that tries to get shoveled down our throats on a daily basis yeah. as well just like in real life you know when somebody's lying to you you, you you feel it. You, you, something's just not right, and, and you sense it. You know, from a corporate, you know, media or a state, you know, sponsored media. You know when you're being lied to, and you don't like it. And we're tired of it. And this is this is the great tool we have right now to say. Never before in human history could we have the opportunity to say, "You are lying," and here's the proof that you're lying. And we're not going to let you have this war. We're not going to let you just say what the truth is, you know, in your terms and define reality in, in, in a way that, um, you know, uh, promotes your agenda, which your agenda is. Well, Car you Carl, know, Carl Rove said that. So much. Yeah, Carl Rove said that. He said, no, wait, 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 no, we dictate reality. We, we're yeah. the ones that steer the, the ship, you know, and that's just such a yeah. bold arrogant insane statement to me and you know i for somebody like me i i always felt like i was dropped off by aliens somewhere along the way because you know i just <laughs> i didn't i didn't um, I'm with you on that one you know i didn't even growing up you know i i had i'm i'm not completely like my parents you know i've got these i've always had these wild ideas and beliefs and you know something that's just in my heart and my gut since i was a young yet real young kid that was like like, there's something that's not right 
with how yeah. things are. I, I'm just always been uneasy with that. And up until the past, you know, good handful of years where I've started to get truly active in a lot of this stuff and everything just opens up wide and you can see it all for what it really is. And that's just probably one of the most liberating experiences anybody can have. You never forget when you first wake up. And they're trying to rewrite history as we speak. And there's actually a piece that Anthony did. Um, Anthony, I found it, and I don't know how old it is, but I'd love to know about it because I never asked you about it. Uh, Anthony, just uh, just, just right quick, right. Anth Anthony dropped off. I don't know if he'll um, call oh. back or not, but um, he, he's oh, not. Hope he does. Yeah, he's not with us right now. Well, there right was a now, piece but... anyway. There was a piece that he did where a girl shooting a history book. Yes. And she's kind of falling backwards, almost like um, Eon Flux something like that, right? and she's shooting through the history book, and what you said is true, and uh, I think that a lot of the people that want to kind of control everything, they want to control history too and tell it the way they want to tell it, even though that's not the way it exactly happened. That's why when you said you need to hear the stories of, of the people that lived it, that's the best testimony, it, to me anyway, is something that somebody said, hey, listen, this is how it happened. It's not, it's not what you've been told. This is what's going on. And uh, that's why testimonies to me for, are so important. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of people that, that don't know what they're talking about. But uh, if you've lived it and you have other people that are kind of saying the same thing, you kind of have to say, hey, there must be something here. I got to I got to investigate more. Sure. Everybody should ask them. You know, I'm, I'm like that. I don't know. It's weird. Sometimes I have to ask myself how I really feel about a situation or an event or an issue. Have you ever? But did you ever listen to uh, Dolores Cannon or read any of her books? I think she wrote 18 books. No. Um, basically, what she says is uh, that we all live in basically a, a meat suit. Uh, I'm I, like, huh? I, ha I, like, I have, yeah, I have, I have, right? I have heard okay. that term. I, I, I have heard that term before, but please go ahead. And basically, we're renting a planet, and we're we're supposed to be good caretakers against uh, other meat suit uh, renters, and we're supposed to take care of our, our Earth. Uh, but we're only here temporarily, and our soul basically lives on forever. And I believe that. It just rings so true. Dolores Cannon's excellent. If you ever read any of her books. Yeah, I'll have to look into her. She does a lot of regression her. history and stuff. So. Yeah, I'll have to definitely uh, check that out. Amazing stuff. I, I, I know you're going to love her. Excellent. Let's dive in a little bit more about what all this is about. Now, now the series, I'd like to, because I'm, I'm unaware, um, as I'm sure the, uh, most of the audience is as well, uh, what, what, all, what all are you tackling with, with this um, series of videos or documentaries? Well, originally it was going to be, I said to Anthony, I said, you know, there's a lot of work that you've done, and he's done probably, I think I have probably over 300 images that he's done. I know he has a lot more than that. Uh, there's enough for a film just if you do a little history on each piece sure. and significant, you know, give people a significance to what, why, what inspired it. I think that that would make a very cool uh, uh, documentary. Uh, and then as well, and, and kind of again with what he said, kind of not sticking it in, or slamming your head with a brick. Um, you know, you got to make it a little bit playful and different. I don't want to make a, uh, a fear porn kind of documentary. So I do want to just kind of bring something a little bit different than changing movies like uh, a lot of people have seen Loose Change, and I think that whole series is excellent, um, and it brings a part of facts and stuff like that. But there were, there were other genres that came after it. It's all fear porn, and, and I don't want to do that. I'm not saying Loose Change was. I think it was more fact-based, but um, I'm saying that I want to bring something that's going to kind of open up new eyes. And I figure art is the, the medium to do it. And then the, the other series was going to be other people that do what they do. For instance, people right. like you guys. Yeah, why are you doing radio? What got you into it? Hey, let's talk about that a little bit and go into, you know, there's tons of people in the movement. And they somehow find a niche of what they're doing. And why is it? Where, how did you get there? Right. Like I know um, somebody that you may know, is, her name is Kristen Megan. You know, no, yeah, Kristen's a great. Uh, we met we met her uh, back in April uh, at uh, what was it? Atlanta Music Liberty Fest, and um, it, she had her daughter there, real sweet uh, little girl she's got, and uh, we got to hear her story for the first time, 
um, back, uh, th- hell, it was this time last year, almost to the week, actually. It was what uh, a- April 6th last year. <laughs> you just we keep all know her chemtrail but... story and, and yeah, you know, how yeah. she got affiliated with the United States Air Force and how she came across you know, the documents and stuff like that. But what, her, what got her motivated? What, what started, like, what was that thing? What were her parents like? You know, how did, how did her parents feel about this? What's, her, what's, what's going on in her life? I mean, I, I could tell you personally, um, a lot of my family does not like what I'm doing. My, my dad still believes airplanes hit the, the World Trade Center right. just the way they said it. And Building 7 fell just because there was some fire in, a, in some corner of the building. Yet the other buildings, like five and uh, what was it three, all got smashed with tons of debris, and they stayed standing. You know, my dad still. I no matter what I do, I think that my if I just sat my dad down for three hours and showed him some stuff, I would have him convinced. But he just doesn't have the patience. So, but we all have these stories, like with our families and stuff like that. What what does your parents think of all this that you're doing? What do your cousins think of it? Right. I mean, are you ostracized? Oh, I'm not ostracized. I wouldn't say that I'm, uh, you know, full full on supported, but you know, I I am, and people know. Like, I I, I just don't. Th- I think a lot of it is is that um, it's not understanding a lot of it. You know, a lot of people think, yeah, okay, stuff's messed up or whatever, or or don't have a clear view of my quote politics or my ideals or belief systems. You you know. Like for me personally, just to give you some background, you know, I've just been a talk radio junkie since I was a kid. You know, uh, when I first heard Howard Stern, when I was real, probably way too young to really listen to that, <laughs> that I kind of got hooked um, organically just being big fans of talk radio. And um, I know I can speak for at least uh, me and Robert and a handful of other people is that, um, you know, we we have a lot of friends that are hardcore activists you know that's their deal they go out and, and and pound the bricks and we do that to a certain extent however we're parents also so this kind of seemed like a more legitimate route to go um at least knowing yeah. talk radio and and being able to do this and uh not not having the luxury of getting hemmed up or arrested or fighting charges every other week you know so you know not to take anything away from people that do that and want it that's their effort you know we support them 100% and have them on the show all the time and get people to tell their stories but you know this this just seemed like a better route for for people like us to go and you do it so well you listen to your voice <laughs> well, so, well thanks <laughs> Uh, but <laughs> so we all have that venue. I think we all have that venue where we get attracted to something or other. And you can't really like some some of my friends are like, hey, you got to get together and do the activism. We're going to be marching in. I'm like, you know what? I'm not really going to carry a sign and do that. I'd rather make a video and affect, you know, potentially 5000 people than sit and, you know, see 5000 people that are just going to see me for a second. I'd rather make something that's a little bit, you know, it's it, it doesn't mean that I'm wrong, it doesn't mean that they're wrong. It's just that they feel comfortable in doing it. No, you're doing. absolutely right. It takes it it takes all kinds, you know. And as long as everybody is willing to step into that um, realm in their own right and get it done in their own right, uh, there is no wrong answer, you know. And I I believe that if you're active in any way shape or form, you know, a lot of people uh you know, really knock like uh, Twitter and Facebook activism and stuff. I believe that there's a place for that. And of course, people like us are all involved in that as well. But, um, you know, there's, there's a people where that is their battle cry. And that's sort of, you know, what they do. And uh, I always like lately I've been viewing Facebook as being kind of like a lunchroom at, in high school. Right. Yeah, and, sure, uh, sure. Where you just kind of like. It, where I just imagine like somebody running into the lunchroom with a bunch of people just talking, and then all of a sudden you run in with this big sign and it says, "Hey, look at this," uh, you know, and it, it says, you know, has a picture of whatever, and then they the, he's screaming at the top of his lungs, and then he leaves, and then people go back to talking again, uh, right. and then another person comes in with a picture and then yells out at the top of their lungs, you know, uh, and then they kind of disappear again. So I, I wanted to actually do a little skit on that. Uh, just, I think it would be hilarious to 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 see that visually. I, that's how I view Facebook. I, I find it I find it more like I use Facebook to log things that I learn about. Sure. So I have I have over four thousand photos 
Wow. Uh, so I do a lot of research about ancient uh, ancient scripts and texts and how it relates to the Masons and how it goes into and then you know you got uh, Area 51 and ancient aliens and ancient alien pictures and paintings and cave paintings and stuff like that and then it goes all the way into you know uh, the atrocities throughout the Egyptian times there were actually conspiracies and you know back then too and it kind of goes forward up from there. So there's there's lots of stuff to research, and I, I use Facebook just to research uh, and, and log a lot of the stuff that I do. And I don't care if people look at my Facebook or not. I use it for myself. I enjoy just being and doing research. I love research. I love reading, and, and that's what I love to do, so – Sorry, there's addicted to it. Yeah, no, nah, there's nothing. There's nothing wrong with it. Everybody needs the bat, their own battle cry. But, um, but um, we, we've sort of, uh, sadly enough, started to reach the end of our time here, John. Um, please, by all means, throw out everything where people can find you, uh, where people can uh, help donate, uh, all that stuff. Because I, I believe right, in what well, you're doing, and it looks like you got a really good thing going here. So. I, I hope it uh, I hope it materializes like we uh, I think I have like 28 days or 29 days on the Kickstarter um, and I know it's always a slow beginning people want to see who's who's going in first um, so we've only had a few people making donations but please go there look at the rewards um, yeah and uh, you know just realize that giving out a, a G Clay uh, of Anthony's work or signed uh, um, paintings or whatever it is uh, you know these things cost money. We're only using, like, you know, he's donating a lot of the stuff that he's doing. I'm donating all of my time right. to making this um, and making it really interesting. I don't want to make something cheesy. I don't want to, you know, I want to go in front of people and really find out what's going on behind the scenes. Um, so anyway, so go to Kickstarter. Uh, the Kickstarter is Behind Truth Art. That's the name of the film. And it will be a series, uh, hopefully starting with Anthony and ending with I want to go behind every activist and make a, a small short film or a full featured film, uh, putting together all the artists in one giant big right, film right. where people could say, holy moly, there's tons and tons of artists that are doing this. I never heard of this guy or I never heard of that guy. Um, so let's start with Anthony. I mean, he's amazing. He has been published in, in all kinds of great magazines like Rolling Stone and Playboy and uh, the Wall Street Journal and other mainstream medias. And then he's also, you know, published in all these regular um, kind of uh, venues as well that are local and, and um, such. So um, it's a great, great piece of work, I think, that we're going to be able to put together. Just go there. It's called uh, Behind Truth Art on Kickstarter. Excellent, man. Um, I, I really appreciate you taking the time with us tonight, and um, hopefully we'll, we'll try to get you back up before the uh, Kickstarter sure. campaign. Yep. Maybe we can have a fan round table. Thing. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can have you for a round table one of these weekend uh, yeah. one of these Wednesdays here coming yep. up. We'll figure it out. Shop talk. Sure. Let me know. <laughs> All right, excellent. All right, guys. Later. Have a great night. Yep, later, John. Bye bye now.